Thousands of Mars bars are produced in each factory per day, and despite that fact, they all taste exactly the same. Because of the fixed recipe and list of ingredients each factory is obliged to use. The ingredients include tons of sugar, skim milk, cocoa butter, corn syrup, palm oil, lactose, salt, egg whites, chocolate, soy lecithin, milk fat, artificial flavor, and several cocoa beans, which are the main raw materials for the production of chocolate. These ingredients are mixed in several steps and in the right amounts to produce the legendary Mars chocolate bars. If you take a bar of Mars chocolates and split it in half, you'll see a double layered interior, not considering the chocolate coating that forms the body. As we've mentioned earlier, the first layer is made from caramel, while the second is from a specially made nougat. To talk about how the entire chocolate bar is made, we're going to start with the nougat. First, a factory worker pours tons of sugar into a massive metal container, and other ingredients are added in as well. These are egg whites, corn syrup, milk, and finally, a small amount of salt. The massive container in which these ingredients have been added has a cap with blades that can spin at a set speed, thus making it a perfect mixer. The factory worker manning this instrument sets the mixer at a particular speed, and after a few minutes of mixing, the nougat is formed. This nougat is mixed until the mixture is thick and consistent, and due to the heat from the mixer, the nougat has a higher than normal temperature after it's removed. From the mixer, the nougat is placed on a cooling roll where it is left to cool, and in the process, the mixture gets thicker, which is perfect. At the cooling roll, the nougat is also thinned out, preparing it to meet the second layer of the chocolate bar. The nougat and caramel meet at this point, but before we explain what happens after, let's talk about the process involved in the production of caramel. Caramel production is one of the quickest production stages since all it involves is slowly heating white granulated sugar. Another factory worker pours a very large quantity of sugar into a huge stainless steel container inside which the sugar is heated to a temperature of about 350 degrees Fahrenheit. However, a few precautions are taken to prevent the process from going sideways. First, the sugar is left to caramelize for just a few minutes to prevent the syrup from getting too dark. Second, both the sugar and the metal container where the heating takes place are checked thoroughly for any form of impurities. Otherwise, the sugar crystals would join unevenly, forming lumps in certain areas. If that happens, the caramelization process would start all over again, so these precautions are strictly taken to prevent that. After the perfect caramel has been formed, the syrup is turned into another mixing bowl, where lots of milk is added to give the caramel a creamy taste. This mixture is thoroughly stirred to make sure that it is homogeneous and consistent, and afterward, it is left to cool for a while. It's also thinned out on a cooling roll, just like the nougat, before the next production process begins. At this point, it's time for the caramel mixture and the nougat to finally meet. What a match made in heaven! One cooling roll spreads the already thinned out nougat onto a flat conveyor, and another spreads out the caramel mix right on top, thus forming the two internal layers of the Mars chocolate bar. This two-layered slab is transferred onto a moving conveyor, which carries it to the point where individual chocolate bars are cut. And this brings us to the next production stage, slitting. The slitting area consists of a huge slitter machine, which consists of very fast and sharp blades that divide the nougat caramel slab into 38 long strips at first, before cutting each strip into the size of an individual Mars bar. At this point, all that's left is to coat these strips with milk chocolate, but they have to be transported to the chocolate area, where they are coated using a machine called enrobers. As expected, the Mars factory produces the chocolate used in each factory by itself, using fresh cocoa beans and a couple of other ingredients. As you may have guessed, millions of cocoa beans are used for the chocolate making process. From the farm, the factory is supplied with their weekly demand of cocoa beans. And after, 
ensuring that only good ones have been supplied. These beans are stored in huge silos until they are ready to be used. Selected ones are cleaned and roasted to enhance the chocolate flavor. Without roasting, the flavor of the chocolate after it has been produced would be evidently subpar. So it's safe to say that the roasting process is an extremely important step, which cannot be skipped and has to be done properly. After roasting, the cocoa beans are put through a crushing machine, which removes the shells. However, the machine is set to a pressure that is not high enough to crush the cocoa content along with the shell. After separating the shells from the seeds, they are sent to the next production stage. Next, the beans are taken to a hydraulic press, which extracts the cocoa butter from the beans as well as other byproducts, most of which are stored to be used in the coming processes. After all the extraction has taken place, all that remains is the unrefined cocoa liquor, which is the basis of dark chocolate. To convert this into milk chocolate, the Mars factory is interested in milk, sugar, and the previously extracted cocoa butter are added to it and all mixed thoroughly. Once the required texture is reached, the mixture is heated, cooled, and reheated to ensure that all the ingredients are completely dissolved and no lumps remain. The chocolate is then filled into enrobing machines, which is the next point that the uncoated nougat caramel candies pass through after leaving the slitting machine. Here, they are fully coated in a thick layer of chocolate and then pass through another machine that inscribes the signature swirl on each bar. Afterward, the chocolate bars are transported to the packaging area, where they are wrapped in the classic black wrappers and packed in a box which is stored in the factory's warehouse or sent off directly to retailers all over the world. What's your favorite layer of the Mars chocolate bar? Leave your answer in the comments section below.